Today, we are headed on a big adventure up above tree line during the winter months. Now, the high peaks of New England during the winter can be ferocious places where the elements can be severe. It's crucial to dress appropriately and safely to navigate these winter conditions. The first element is our base layer. The base layer is designed to fit snugly on your entire body from your ankles to your neck without any bunching or gaps. We're going to now tackle the first elements of protecting our feet. Now, just like the rest of our body, I use a base layer for my feet. In this case, it's a liner sock. Over that, we want to add our warmest insulating sock possible. I prefer a heavy-duty wool sock, which provides padding, still insulates well even when it gets slightly damp, and provides extra padding inside uh, your shoe. Okay, our next layer is our bib or pants. This is our first windproof, waterproof layer that we're going to be adding over top of our base layer. The bibs are your armor for your lower body and chest. I prefer bibs because they provide ankle to waist coverage with the additional extension over your torso. It eliminates any potential for gaps around your waist. Okay, our next layer is one that's entirely dependent on conditions and your personal preference and tolerance to cold. Now your options are either a, something as simple as the vest, you can wear your insulating jacket of preference. Okay, our next layer is our jacket. This is our windproof over layer that goes on top of our base layer bibs and whatever insulation we've provided. Key features to look for in selecting your jacket is windproofness. Anything that's Gore-Tex or an equivalent waterproof breathable material will be 100% windproof. Some materials, some shop shells that provide better breathability uh, but are not necessarily 100% waterproof would be appropriate for very cold weather excursions where you're dealing with snow and ice rather than liquid rain. It's imperative to have a hood that easily and comfortably fits over your head and all of your headwear. Okay, we're down to just our hands and our head. Just like your feet and body, it's important to have the equivalent of long underwear for your hands. Just like your socks, these would be called liner gloves. We're going to need more than just this to keep our hands from becoming frigid popsicles on our adventure. We can either go with an over glove or an over mitt. An over glove provides you with a fair amount of dexterity. The drawback is that they're not nearly as warm as a mitt. Mitts are essentially giant sleeping bags for your hands. The trade-off is a loss of dexterity. I find that manipulating ice axe at trekking poles with mittens to be quite challenging. All right, we're down to the final piece of the puzzle, our heads. Anything that's exposed can frostbite in a matter of minutes when conditions are severe enough. You'll now notice that nowhere on my face or head is there an exposed skin. I'm fully protected from the wind.